Hello and welcome back to English Today. This is DVD 8 and the fourth DVD of your elementary level. And in this DVD, you will see another two episodes of That's Life, Our Story, followed by our special TV programs. This time, a sports expert will be talking all about rugby, followed by Air Travel Without Stress, featuring our travel expert. Then, in the grammar section, we will study the future forms will and going to, and also look at special question forms and question tags. Okay, so, happy studying to you all. How does this scarf suit me, Anne? Oh, very well. You look fine. Really? I'm not sure. Look, maybe this one looks better? Mm. Don't panic, Peter. Everything is going to be all right tonight. I don't know. Actually, I have a sore throat. And I'm losing my voice. I'll sing badly tonight. I'm sure of it. Come on, Peter. You will sing very well. You are a professional singer. Don't forget it. Well, I'm going to have some tea. Would you like some? Thank you, Anne. I would really like a cup of tea. If it's not too much trouble. No, not at all. I'll just... Add some water to the pot. A cup of tea and my chocolate cake will keep your mind off the musical for five minutes at least. Shall I give you a hand? Oh, yes, thanks. Here is the cake. Oh. oh. Listen, I know you are nervous, but try to be careful, please. I'm sorry, Anne. Listen, how do you think the musical will go? I think it will go very well. Greece is considered a classic musical. It's successful, entertaining, there will be loads of people clapping. Do you really think so? Sure I do. Hey, Peter, what time does the show start? At 9 o'clock. Mm. How are we going to get to the theater? I'm going to drive. Uh, I don't think that's a very good idea. Why not? Because parking there is almost impossible. OK. We'll take the tube. That's a much better idea. When should we leave? Around 8.30. No, that's too late. OK. We'll leave earlier. Oh, I'm so sorry, Anne. Oh, Peter! You're hopeless. OK, okay listen. I think you need to relax a bit. Why don't you go and take a nap? I can't sleep. I'm too nervous. OK. Why don't you rehearse your part again? I can't. I can't remember anything. OK. OK. Go wherever you want. Just please leave me alone. Please. Hi, and welcome back to English Today, the only live TV program when you can learn the English language. Did you see that Peter dropped chocolate cake and tea all over the table and Anne didn't really react? She's becoming more tolerant, isn't she? Great. Now. 
I have an interesting thing to teach you in this lesson, and it's about will. Now, people usually think that will, the future will, is very easy in English. But it isn't that easy. And in this lesson, I want to look at a particular use of will. Now, watch this. Listen. Imagine that I'm in Oxford Street in London, shopping. I stop outside a shop and I see a beautiful dress, and I think, I like that, I want that, and I say, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. Now, I'll is the abbreviation of I will, I'll buy it. We use this form when we make a spontaneous decision. It's nothing planned, it happens spontaneously. It's called in English a snap, snap decision. All right, let's continue. So I see the dress and I think, mm, I'll buy it, great. Then I look at the price, mm, 1,500 euro, crikey. And I think, mm, I won't buy it, negative of will. I won't buy it. But then I think, now wait a minute, I haven't bought myself anything lovely for a long time. Maybe my boyfriend can help me. So I decide, I'll buy it. I go into the shop, I talk to the shop assistant and I say, that dress, I like that dress, can I try it? She says, yeah, yeah, sure. So I put it on look at myself in the mirror and think, fantastic, I'll take it. So I go to the shop assistant and I say, um, I'll take it. She says, fine, madam, um, how would you like to pay? Uh, how would I like to pay? Um, I, um, cash? must be joking. Cash, 1,500 euros, cash. <laughs> no. Um, mm, credit card. Yes, exactly. I'll pay by credit, by credit card, okay? I'll pay by credit card. So, in my bag, here's my bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I left my credit card at home. Um, what shall I do? Um, uh, yeah, good. I'll come back tomorrow. <clears throat> I'll come back tomorrow, okay? And she says, that's fine, madam. That's fine. Don't worry. She says, mm, mm, yeah, I'll put it aside for you, madam. I'll put it aside. And I'll say, Great, thank you so much. Don't worry, I'll definitely come back tomorrow. <laughs> okay, now, all those were examples of snap decisions, spontaneous decisions, and that happens many times in a day. So, let's look at the form together. We have I will contracted to become I'll. Look at the examples. I'll try it, I'll take it, I'll pay by credit card, I'll put it aside for you, I'll make a bowl of pasta, and I'll come back later. So, snap, spontaneous decisions, I'll, all right? Now, the negative form we mentioned before, you heard me with the money, is won't. Be careful with the pronunciation. It's not want, it's won't. So the example is, I won't buy it, or I won't pay by cash. All right, so will, won't. You can also ask a question in this situation of a snap decision, and you can say, shall I? Now that's a big change because will in the question form becomes shall. So we say, shall I make, shall I make, 
a bowl of pasta or shall I help you? All right, that's the question form. So I'll do it. I won't do it. Shall I do it? So those are snap decisions. Very useful, very important. And not many people remember that use of will. Great. Let's go back and see how Peter's feeling, and then I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Bye. Hi, Anne. Hi, Peter. I'm starving. Is there anything to eat? How can you think about food at a time like this? Why? What's the matter? What's the matter? The performance is tonight. Come on, Peter. Don't panic. Everything is going to be all right tonight. Don't worry. Why does everyone tell me the same stupid things? Because it's the truth. Look, Peter. Take this lucky charm. I bought it in Portobello Market this morning. I'll give it to you as a lucky mascot. Remember, you have to kiss it three times. And then keep it in the right pocket of your jacket. Why just in the right pocket? Well, I don't know. The woman who gave it to me said that this is what you have to do. Anyway. I'm sure it will bring you luck. Mm, I'm not so sure. Why not? Shall we bet on it? All right. Sounds like fun. How much? Oh, let's make it interesting. If it brings you luck, you'll take me for dinner at Bluebird. Bluebird? Are you crazy? That's London's most expensive restaurant. I know, I know. But the musical is important to you, Peter, isn't it? Well, all right, Alice. What will you do if it doesn't bring me luck? Well, I will cook dinner for a month. <laughs> but you can't cook. Aha, Peter. That's why I said it. This way, I'm sure you will make it bring you luck. Hi, Anne. Hi, Peter. Hello again, and welcome back. The most expensive restaurant in London. Hmm, good for Alice. Now, in this lesson, I want to look at the future again, but at a new form of the future, and it's the form going to. And in the episode, we heard Anne say, everything's going to be all right. So I want to look at that form with you now. And... To illustrate it, I want to tell you about something wonderful that happened to me. I won, I've just won in fact, 20,000 euro. And I have to decide what to do with this money. And I have a few intentions, so let me tell you about them. Firstly, I'm going to relax for a few days in a spa, hopefully with my boyfriend relax in a spa, hot water, you know, wonderful. Then I'm going to visit some old friends in Canada that I haven't seen for a long time, so that's good. Then what? Yes, then a dream. I'm going to travel around Turkey and I, I'm going to go in a hot air balloon over Cappadocia. Fabulous. Then what? Um, I'm going to organize a surprise holiday for my parents in Egypt. Another thing, let's see, another intention that I have. Oh, yes, I'm going to buy another double bass for my boyfriend because 
you know, it's a, an expensive interest, I, I, instrument and he needs it for his work. So I'm going to buy that. Uh, then what? Oh, yes. I'm going to buy another Jack Russell Terrier to keep Suki companion. And the last thing, well, I think I'm going to put the rest in the bank. All right? Now, I was explaining to you my intentions for the future. And when you do that in English, you use a particular form in the future. And it's going to. Let's look at that on the screen. So, the verb to be plus going to and then the infinitive. So the examples that I was using is this form. I'm going to have some tea. For example, you see the verb to be, going to, and the infinitive. He's going to sing well. So, he, third person, changed the auxiliary. He's going to sing well. Everything's going to be all right, as Anne said. They're going to take the tube, you know, the underground in London. They're going to take the the tube. Now very often when you hear this form, you hear a pronunciation like gonna. So they're gonna take the tube. And that's when we completely contract they are going to and it becomes gonna. And often you see that in subtitles uh, in English on films. Gonna. Okay? Now the negative form is easy. It's the negative of the auxiliary to be. So I'm not going to leave tomorrow. I'm not going to leave tomorrow. He isn't going to return soon. And we aren't going to come with you. All right, sometimes you hear, I'm not gonna. He's not gonna. That's when we speak quickly, all right? And then the question form, again, easy. You invert the subject and the auxiliary. How are we going to get there? How are we going to get there? Where is it going to happen? And when are they going to leave or are they going to leave? All right, so that's another form of the future. And you can see slowly that the English future is quite interesting and quite complex. So when you want to talk about your intentions, you use going to. And I'm going to see you in the next lesson. All right, bye for now. musical was great, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Peter was excellent. Well, now let's think about the party. It's time for fun. Oh, by the way, who's coming to the party tomorrow? Well, David will be here. Mary, Paul and Tom will be here as well. Mm. Everyone will be here. I wonder if Jack will be here. Jack? Why? He's leaving on a business trip tomorrow morning. He doesn't know exactly when he'll be back. Hey, girls. What are you talking about? Anne was telling me that you won't be coming to the party this evening. It isn't true, is it? Yes, it is. I'm afraid I can't. Business before pleasure. You never will change, will you? Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hi. I really don't have a choice. Listen, Jack, I was wondering if you really have to go away on business, or if you're not coming to Peter's party for some other reason. <laughs> no, Shannon, I, I do have a business engagement. Anyway, since you asked, I'll tell you. There's more. I'm jealous of Peter. Oh, come on, Jack. You only care about business. <laughs> sure. That's what they all say. But... <laughs> you know, I... I'm... 
interested in you. And Sharon, are you, are you really interested in me? Em, um, who are you talking to on the telephone? Mary. She wanted to know what time the party's going to start. I think it will start at about nine o'clock, won't it? Well, uh, girls, I have to go finish my presentation. See you later. Bye. Back to work. You'll never quit, will you? Oh, what a shame that Jack isn't coming. He's a very interesting person. I wonder if you're falling in love with him. Come on, you can tell me. Okay. But don't tell anyone. Yes. <laughs> He's quite handsome. Do you think he likes me, Sharon? <laughs> what a question. It's none of my business. Don't be so difficult, Sharon. I was just asking confidentially your opinion. You are my friend, Sharon. I'm sorry, Anne. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm just a bit nervous these days. Why? Because of Peter. We're having some problems. I'm sorry, Anne, but I don't want to talk about that. I've got to go. See you later. Bye-bye. Oh, Jack. You're always so messy. You leave your things everywhere. But... What's this? In the pocket? What? It's Jack and, and Sharon. And he's kissing her. Oh, my God. Now I understand everything. <laughs> Hello again and welcome back to your live English language lessons. And in this lesson, we're going to learn something about questions. Remember how we said that English questions are difficult because of all those auxiliaries? Well, in this lesson, we're going to learn something which is especially typical of the English language. They're called question tags. Now, let me give you an example of a question tag tag. She's unhappy, isn't she? Let's look at that. So, she's unhappy, isn't she? Strange, hey? She's unhappy, isn't she? Now, it's not really a question asking you for information. It's more a question asking for confirmation, whether you agree. And usually the people agree. So, she's unhappy, isn't she? Yes, she is. Look at the construction. She's unhappy is in the positive form. And then we have the tag. It's called the question tag after. In the verb to be, but in the negative question form. She's unhappy, isn't she? This is very common in English and not common in other languages because other languages usually use no. For example, she's unhappy, no. We repeat the verb. And because it's complicated now, let's go to the screen and see some more examples of that, okay? So, she's upset is like she's unhappy. She's upset, isn't she? You're a student, the verb to be, you're a student. You take the verb to be, are, and you turn it into a negative question. So we say, you're a student, aren't you? All right? 
Next one. He's Brazilian, isn't he? Do you see the mechanism now? It's raining, isn't it? Again, I'm not asking for information. I'm asking for confirmation. They're watching television. They are watching, aren't they? They're watching television, aren't they? And you notice that my voice actually goes down at the end, so it's not like a real question where your voice goes up. We're learning, aren't we? You live in Italy now. Look at this example here. You live is the present tense. So we need the auxiliary of the present tense of live, which is not the verb to be. So look how that works. You live in Italy, don't you. Negative don't. Auxiliary is do in the negative don't you. Interesting, eh? You live in Italy, don't you. If we change that into the third person, it becomes she likes English, what's the auxiliary? Exactly, does in the negative, doesn't she? So she likes English, doesn't she? And the last example, they work at home, don't they? They work at home, don't they? All right, so it's not easy. You have to keep in mind the auxiliaries all the time. What happens if we begin with a negative sentence? For example, you aren't American. Well, then we use a positive tag. So, you aren't American, are you? Okay, aren't, are. She isn't a teacher. Is she? Negative, positive. He isn't watching TV. Is he? They aren't playing today. Are they? Let's change to the present tense. You don't play tennis, do you? We use the auxiliary do, do you? Question form. It doesn't work. Does it, third person. She doesn't like him, does she? And they don't come often, do they? Now, you're probably thinking, God, that's really difficult. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice. But when you know your auxiliaries well, it becomes easier and easier. Okay, so don't worry. Slowly but surely, as we say. Now let's turn to that's life. And our friends are having a party. Let's go and join them. Bye. It's a shame Jack isn't here, isn't it? Yes, it's just not the same without him, is it? Well, business is business, you know. Well, Anne, I wonder what wonderful food you cooked for us this evening. Anne, hello. Are you there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Peter. I was miles away. Oh, what did you say? What did you cook for us? Oh, your favorite. Fish and chips. Oh, what would I do without you? Hey, what about me? I brought the beer. Yes, we're glad you did. Cheers. 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 Here's to Peter's success. Well, guys, this is the right time for an important announcement. Last night, there was a famous director at the theater. We met after the show, and he told me he is preparing a musical to be performed all over Japan. So he wants to see me for an audition next week. Well, cheers! 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 You'll be famous soon, Peter. Surprise! Jack! 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 Well, well, not so dedicated to your work, are you? Peter, get me a beer. Now you're talking.
Hi, Anne. Is everything okay? <laughs> yes. No, John. Oh, everything's fine. It, it was just really a surprise to me. <laughs> Hello and welcome back again for some more English. Now at that party everybody seemed happy except Anne. And nobody really noticed what was happening between Sharon and Jack. Well anyway, let's get back to English questions. Last time we studied question tags. But this time I want to look at another question form in English which is very important. Now, when you don't know the subject, you need to ask a question in order to get the subject. Now, let me explain that. Usually, in a normal question in English, like, where do you work, the subject form is in the question, where do you work? And the answer would be, I work in London. But if I want to ask you about the subject, I have to change the question and it becomes who works in London. Now that question is asking for the subject and the answer could be my brother, the subject, works in London. Now the good thing is we eliminate the auxiliaries do and does. Yahoo! I can hear you say. <laughs> Let's do some examples before we go to the screen, okay? Now, I'll ask you some questions. For example, who likes English? Notice that there's the S on the verb because who is considered a third person. Who likes English? I do. You do, for example, all right? Who lives in igloos? Now, give me the subject. Who lives in igloos? Yeah, ex exactly. Eskimos live in igloos. All right, you give me the subject. Now, answer this one. Who cultivates rice? Hmm? Who cultivates rice? Yeah, the Chinese, the Italians, Southeast Asian countries. Okay, good. Next one. Who sings musicals in That's Life? Exactly. Jack sings musicals. Great. Um, who wants to be an artist? I'm asking you for the subject. Who wants to be an artist? Yeah, Alice does. Alice wants to be an artist. And who likes Jack? Well, Sharon does. And does, and so does Alice. He's a lucky man. All right, now let's go to the screen and see those written because it's unusual for you now to learn a question with no auxiliary. So, what happens is you have the word who, which is the question word, and you eliminate the auxiliary. If you look at the first example, which is the typical question, who do you live with? You're asking for the object. And the answer could be your family, for example. Who do you live with? The subject is you. You ask for the object. But who lives with you? You are asking for the subject. And the answer could be my family. Okay? Let's look at some more examples. No auxiliary. So, who works in an office? He does. Who likes English? We do. Who lives in igloos? Eskimos live in igloos. Who cultivates rice? The Italians, the Chinese. Who understands Russian? I don't. Do you? Who sings musicals? Peter does. 
Who wants to be an artist? Alice. And who likes Jack? We all do. <laughs> okay. So, very interesting this, and we will look at it again in the future. But remember, this is one occasion, the only occasion, where you don't need auxiliaries in the question form when you're asking for the subject. So, who understands this? We do. <laughs> okay. So, I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of Sports Special. And welcome to John Forbes, our sports expert. Hello, Eric, and good afternoon to all our sports fans. Well, John, which sport are you going to talk about today? Today, I'd like to talk about rugby. Fantastic. I'm a real rugby fan. I think it's a really exciting sport. John, a question. Where did rugby start? Well, you know, rugby is a town in England near Birmingham. Yes. There's a famous school there called Rugby School. It's one of the oldest schools in England. It opened in 1567. Anyway, boys at this school started the game. Really? And where is rugby played today? It's played all around the world, but there are eight main countries. These are Ireland, Wales, England, Scotland, France, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. And it's becoming more popular today in Italy and Argentina. Who plays rugby? Mainly men, but there are more and more women's teams. Really? Women? That's a surprise. That's right. There are more than 400 women's teams in England today. I see. John, can you explain to our viewers how to play rugby? Of course. Remember, rugby is very different from soccer. The ball's oval like an egg. There are 15 players in a team, and the players can carry the ball. In fact, the aim is to run fast with the ball in your hands. And what about a tackle? What's that? To stop a player of the opponent's team running with the ball, you tackle him. You catch his legs and pull him to the ground. That sounds dangerous. Yes, it can be. There are lots of injuries in rugby. It's a very physical game. And how do you score? Well, you run with the ball and put it down on the ground at the opponent's end of the pitch. Of course, your opponents do everything they can to stop you from reaching their end of the pitch. You score a try if you cross the try line and put the ball down on the ground. You can also score points by kicking the ball between the two goal posts. The goal posts are very high. If you do this, you score a goal. So, there are tries and there are goals. That's right. Just one more question. What are scrums? Scrums are special to rugby. Players from the two sides push against each other to try to get the ball. Scrums sound dangerous, too. Yes, they can be dangerous, but it's fun. You know, I used to play rugby. Really? Yes, but I injured my shoulder and had to stop. I just watch now. Well, I sometimes watch a game on Saturday afternoons. How about coming along? Sure. How about next weekend? Great. Okay. Thank you, John. Goodbye. And goodbye to all our sports fans. See you next week for another edition of Sports Special. So, like in football, the group of players that play rugby together is called a team. In rugby, it's called a rugby team and there are 15 players in a team. The players are called rugby players. Where do they play? On a rugby pitch. We also say a football pitch, which is where football players play football, and a cricket pitch, where cricket players play cricket. When we go to watch a rugby match, we go to a rugby ground. 
Well, as John said, rugby can be dangerous. In fact, there are lots of injuries in rugby. An injury is when you hurt or damage a part of the body. If a player has a serious injury, then he cannot play. To injure is a regular verb. For example, if you break your arm, you say, I injured my arm. Why is rugby so dangerous? Well, it's a very physical sport. This means you use your body a lot, and there is a lot of contact with the other players. When a player tackles, he stops a player from the other team by pulling him to the ground. This is called a tackle. To tackle is the verb. The aim of a tackle is to get the ball. You can tackle in football, too, but you can only use your feet to get the ball. In rugby, you use your whole body. What about a scrum? This is a term specific to rugby. A scrum is when all the players push against each other to get the ball. As John explained, in rugby, there are two different ways of scoring. To score means to win a point for your team. You score a try when the ball touches the ground. You score a goal when you kick the ball between the two goal posts. Well, sports fans, that's all we have time for today. See you next time. Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of the Travel Programme. And of course, welcome to Christine Oteng, our travel expert. Hello, Lucy. Well, Christine, do you know that one of the main causes of stress in the West is air travel, according to research from the University of Illinois in the USA? You know, that doesn't surprise me. Air travel can be a very stressful experience. It seems that a lot of people start to feel nervous in the travel agency when they're buying the ticket or when they're buying the ticket online at home. Really? Well, why don't we give our viewers some advice on how to reduce that stress and enjoy air travel more? Sure. Just follow a few simple rules uh, and you'll fly without any stress at all. The first rule, don't arrive at the airport late. Oops, I always arrive late. That's not a good idea. For a start, if you arrive at the airport early, you have plenty of time to check in. You can go straight through passport control and the security check. Then you have plenty of time to relax. You can do some shopping, have a drink, read a magazine or a book, all stress-free without worrying about missing the flight. You're right, Christine. It's important to arrive at the airport with plenty of time to spare. And what else can I do to make air travel less stressful? Well, another cause of stress is the amount of luggage that we take with us. We always take too much. Listen, don't take more than 20 kilos and only take one suitcase. Check the weight before you leave home and relax at the check-in. There's no need now to worry about excess baggage charges. It's always relaxing to save money. Definitely. And one last thing on the topic of luggage. Yes. Hand luggage. Take one small bag and don't put too much in it. Remember, you'll have to carry this around the airport. Good advice. You know, many people have a fear of flying. These people become nervous when the plane takes off and lands. Of course, I understand that people may feel nervous at these moments. They should remember that flying is the safest way to travel. So, relax and enjoy the flight. And you shouldn't look out the windows too much. Why not? Clouds are relaxing. But if you do feel nervous, you could try taking a tranquilizer. If you have a real fear of flying, they can help you relax. Don't take too many, though. Of course not. And try closing your eyes as the plane takes off and lands. Think of the beautiful place you're going to or the wonderful holiday you just had. Well, how to enjoy stress-free air travel. Don't arrive at the airport late. Don't take too much luggage. 
After passport control and the security check, relax with a drink and something interesting to read. Or perhaps do some shopping. And once you're on the plane, remember that flying is the safest way to travel. So thanks, Christine, for this very useful advice, and goodbye. Goodbye, Lucy, and safe travelling. See you soon with another edition of The Travel Programme. Goodbye. Well, I certainly didn't know that air travel could cause so much stress. Air travel is the general expression for everything to do with flying. So the stress can even start when people buy their tickets at the travel agency or online. The travel agency is the place where you book a holiday or buy an air ticket. Online means you buy the ticket on the internet and you pay by credit card. To avoid stress, you should arrive at the airport with plenty of time to spare. To have plenty of time to spare means you have lots of time to relax. Notice how we say arrive at the airport and relax is a verb. So, you should arrive at the airport early so you can relax before the flight. If you arrive at the airport late, you could miss the flight. To miss the flight means you can't get on the plane and it leaves without you. Before you can get on the plane, you have to go through passport control. This is where you show your passport to an official. You have to go through the security check. This is where you put your hand luggage into the x-ray machine. Hand luggage is the bag you take on the plane with you. Luggage is the general word for suitcases and bags. A suitcase is a kind of bag where you put your clothes and shoes. Now, some people have a fear of flying. This means they're afraid of flying and they get nervous when the plane takes off and lands. When the plane takes off, it leaves the ground. And when a plane lands, it touches the ground again. So remember, flying is the safest way to travel. See you soon.